It was on top of Mount Sinai that God gave Moses the dates and observances of the seven feasts of the Lord, which are Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, trumpets, atonements, and then the Feast of Tabernacles. It is interesting to note that the Hebrew word for feasts is moed, which more literally translated means divine appointments. And more importantly, all seven feasts point to and are fulfilled in Jesus. Leviticus 23.4 says, These are the appointed times of the Lord, holy convocations, which you shall proclaim at the times appointed for them. The rest of the chapter goes on to describe seven annual feasts when God's people were to worship, repent, celebrate, and reflect on His provision. Observant Jews still celebrate these appointed times today. In Colossians 2, verses 16 and 17, Paul says that these feasts are a mere shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. The feasts can be grouped into two categories, the Spring Holy Days and the Autumn Holy Days. The Spring Feasts include Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, and Pentecost. The Autumn Feasts include the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and Tabernacles. You may have heard these feasts called by other names, which we'll mention later on. One of the most well-known Jewish festivals is Passover, and was observed to remember the last plague of Egypt when God spared by passing over the firstborn children of Israel. Passover was to be held on the 14th day, the second Sabbath, or seven, of the first month. Passover initiated the Feast of Unleavened Bread to remember God's deliverance out of Egypt and His miraculous provision, which required seven days of eating unleavened bread. It the Feast of First Fruits was the day after the Sabbath following the Passover. It was a time to dedicate the very earliest part of the harvest to the Lord. Exactly seven complete weeks past Passover on the 50th day was the Feast of Weeks, also called Pentecost. Next are the festivals of the seventh month. On the first day is the Feast of Trumpets, a day of rest reserved for joyfully blowing trumpets and offering sacrifices. Ten days later, the Day of Atonement is observed, in which the High Priest would enter the Holy of Holies to make atonement for the people, while the people observed fasting and repentance of their sin. The final feast of the seventh month is the Feast of Tabernacles after two sets of seven, the 15th day. The people are commanded to build temporary booths to live in for seven days, a joyful reminder of God's protection. Jesus was crucified on Passover. He was then buried on the Feast of Unleavened Bread and resurrected on the Feast of First Fruits. Fifty days later, the Holy Spirit was given to us on Pentecost. Now the entire human race exists between the Feast of the Spring and Fall, which represent the Church Age. The Lord is harvesting believers and patiently beckoning those who will follow Him until the Fall Feast come. These Fall Feasts are to be fulfilled in the Second Coming of Jesus. And the first of these is the Feast of Trumpets. And this represents, I believe, the rapture of the Church, while the Feast of Atonement represents the Second Coming. Now the Feast of Tabernacles represents the Kingdom Age of the Lord. Now let's look at the fulfillment of these four spring holy days and how God ordained them to perfectly align with Christ's first coming. Christ was crucified at the same time that the Passover lambs were being sacrificed. That evening, Christ, a sinless offering, was buried while the Feast of Unleavened Bread commenced. Then Christ rose from the grave as the first fruits of the resurrection here on Pentecost. The Holy Spirit was poured out on the new church gathered in Jerusalem. Remember what this feast celebrated? The harvest. How fitting that it initiated the harvest of souls in the church age. These three autumn feasts do not have a clear and specific prophetic fulfillment anywhere in history. The Feast of Trumpets has often been seen as a foreshadowing of the rapture. The Bible frequently mentions the sounding of the trumpets and descriptions of the rapture. The Day of Atonement foreshadows the second coming of Christ and Israel getting right with their Messiah. The theme of judgment corresponds to Jesus' judgment of the nations upon His return. This time is known as the Millennial Kingdom. Zechariah prophesied that during this time period, the entire world will celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. 
So uh, the first feast that, we, that we're going to look at is the Feast of uh, uh, Passover. Now, Passover, we find the scripture in Leviticus 23, 5, pointed to the Messiah as our Passover lamb, 1 Corinthians 5, 7, uh, whose blood would be shed for our sins. Jesus was crucified on the day of preparation for the Passover at the same hour that the lambs were being slaughtered for the Passover meal that evening. It's very important to understand that Jesus was crucified on Passover. He was bound to the cross exactly at the same hour where the Jews practiced for 1,500 years. Second feast is the, uh, the, you know, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Uh, unleavened Bread, Leviticus 23, 6, pointed to the Messiah's sinless life. And you know, leaven speaks of sin, uh, making him the per perfect sacrifice for sin. He was the unleavened bread. Uh, Leviticus 23, 6 says, And on the 15th day of the same month uh, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Unto the Lord, seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Then you have the third feast, which is your first fruits. Uh, first fruits, Leviticus 10 talks about uh, and is pointing to the Messiah's resurrection as the first fruits of the righteous. Jesus was resurrected on this de very day, which is one of the reasons that Paul refers to him in 1 Corinthians 15 20 as the first fruit from the dead. Uh, it says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that slept. So Jesus again rose on first fruits. Very important to understand that he fulfilled this exact feast on the feast. Then you have the feast of uh, Pentecost, the feast of weeks. Leviticus 23, 16, uh, and this occurred 50 days after the beginning of the feast of unleavened bread and pointed to the great harvest of souls and the gift of the Holy Spirit for both Jew and Gentile who would be brought into the kingdom of God uh, during the church age. Have a look at that in Acts uh, chapter 2. The church was actually established on this day when God poured out his Holy Spirit and 3,000 Jews responded to Peter's great sermon and his first proclamation of the gospel. Then you have uh, the fifth feast, which is the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, Trumpets, Leviticus 23, verse 24, the first uh, of the four feasts. This is the next prophetic feast to be fulfilled. This day points to the rapture of the church where the Messiah. Jesus will appear in the heavens as it comes for his bride, the church. Leviticus 23, 24. Rapture is always associated in scripture with the blowing of a loud trumpet. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 18. And 1 Corinthians 15 are the two central passages that talks about this event. Then you have the atonement or Yom Kippur. The Day of Atonement, and we can read about that in Leviticus 23, 27. This feast prophetically points to the second coming of Jesus with his raptured saints when he returns to earth. That will be the Day of Atonement for the Jewish remnant when they look upon him uh, who they have pierced uh, and, and repent for their sins and receive him as their Messiah according to Zechariah 12, 10 and Romans 11, uh, verse 1 and 6 uh, through to 25 and 36. Zechariah 12, 10 says, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Then you have the Feast of uh, Tabernacles, also known as Sikot, uh, Leviticus 23, uh, 34. And this feast they points to the Lord's promise that he will once again tabernacle with his people when he returns with the rapture saints again to reign over all the world. Micah 417. He ends the tribulation, he builds the temple and starts his millennial reign. And it says in Micah, and I will make her that holdeth a remnant and her that was cast off far off a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion, which we know is Jerusalem from henceforth even forever. As you can see again here, the scripture is referring to the nation of Israel that God's going to restore as a strong nation uh, over all the earth. Taken collectively, these seven feasts of Israel present the picture of God's ultimate plan of redemption. It stands to reason that since Christ fulfilled the spring feast, literally and precisely, that he will do the same for his second coming during the autumn holy days, which have yet to be fulfilled.